A couple of weeks ago, Mani Hapoya put out a video about beginner filmmakers' mistakes. But he got two things wrong. If you haven't seen the video, let me tell you that for the most part he's pretty much on point. But it's on these two issues that he mentions right at the start, when he's talking about setting the camera right. But Matty said this. Highly recommend shooting in log. I don't think there's any reason to not shoot in log these days. It's just giving you way more data, way more information to work with. And then the aperture, that is your creative choice. But I think the right choice for most situations is to just go as wide open as possible. So the smallest number f-stop that you can, just to get, you know, some of that nice shallow depth of field, that blur, it just, it just looks way better. Well, that's a big missing thing. About 10 years ago, we used to swear about that place. Huh? See, Matty says this is no reason for not shooting long. That is unless you're shooting 8 bit. Most people start shooting on entry-level cameras. <sighs> Sometimes even prosumer. You know what? Most of those shoot only up to 8 bit. Which means when you try to recover all that log crushed down, well, your image is going to break. I know this may sound a little bit confusing, especially when you're starting out, but let me break it down to you into three simple aspects. That is, dynamic range, big depth, and log itself. Future gear here. I was assembling the video and I realized I had one missing file, which turned out to be the only take I had of this following part, so now I have to reshoot it. Anyway, what I wanted to say is that cameras can only see a limited amount of light, and the difference between the darkest point and the widest point that's what we call the dynamic range. Thing is, your video file can only show an even smaller part of that. So we end up having to sample down all that continuous light information down to a fixed number of samples. How many? That depends on the bit depth. For an 8-bit image, you get 256 shades per channel. That gives you 16.7 million colors, which sounds like a lot, but it's still not enough to represent those smooth gradients. Now, if you go to a 10-bit image, you get four times that, 1,024 samples per channel, which gives you well over a billion colors total. Now, to try and preserve as much as dynamic range as possible, some cameras, instead of doing a linear one-to-one -one conversion, allow you to record using a logarithmic scale, you know, a curve, that crushes down all that information into an even smaller space that actually can fit inside your file's boundary, but also gives you a flatter image, one with less contrast and less saturation. But when you try to bring it back to normal levels, if you shot it on 8-bit, you won't have enough color information. Imagine this, you have a desaturated green, a desaturated blue. If you don't have enough information in between, they will become the same color. Now, bit depth, it's not the only reason for not shooting a log. In fact, there's an even bigger and better reason. But first, let's talk about aperture. Or, just like Matty says, shooting wide open. Matty says it's your creative choice, but it's best if you shoot wide open most of the time, just because it looks better, just because of the creamy, blurry background and for subject separation. That's far from the best way of separating your subject. Check this out. So, Movies do this all the time. They want you to look at the main character, even when they're walking in the middle of a crowd. Now, how do you do it? You can't use shallow depth of field, so otherwise you would look like a miniature city or, or a Lego movie. No, they usually go for things like contrast, color, textures, positioning, framing, anything but depth of field. You know why? Context. Because you need context for a story to make sense. So that's why I think Matty got these two things wrong. You see, you don't always shoot log, you don't always shoot wide open. 
Or you should always ask yourself, is this what I need? Question things up, you know? Try things up. Because that's, uh, that's how you learn things. That's how you grow. Yeah. Oh. Now, since Matty failed to give us two beginner mistakes, I'm going to give you two of the most common beginner mistakes, because I do them all the time. <laughs> now, mistake number one is not shooting long enough. See, it happens all the time. You think you got all your takes, all your A roll, your B roll, the different angles. You get to the editing room and you just miss that one shot. Trust me, it's way better to have lots and lots of clips that you didn't end up using rather than just missing that one shot. Which brings me to mistake number two, trying to use every single clip you shot. No, it's called editing for a reason. <laughs> no, cut the fast. You don't need every single shot. Just use what the story needs. Yeah, that's it for me now. I hope you liked this one. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and oh, drop a comment. Just say hi and tell me what you think. Now, Mari, if you see this, tell me, what do you think? Am I wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I'll just see you in the next one. Bye.